Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about transport of macromolecules across plasma membrane. This takes place by membrane bound vesicles, so it is also known as vesicular transport. In this first is endocytosis, endo means inside and cytosis means in the cell. That means the materials are taken inside the cell. The term was given by Christian D. Dave. In this process, eukaryotic cells internalize the materials from the surrounding environment. Plasma membrane invaginates and surrounds the material then pinching of the plasma membrane takes place and membrane brown vesicle is formed that is released in the cytoplasm. This is plasma membrane, material is present outside the cell and this is cytoplasm. Now the plasma membrane invaginates and surrounds the material. This is pseudopodia. Further invagination of plasma membrane takes place, then it is pinched off and membrane bound vesicle is formed with the outside material present inside. It is released in the cytoplasm. This way material that was present outside the cell is now internalized by the cell. Endocytosis is of two types. First is phagocytosis. It is also known as cellular eating. In this large particles that is present outside the cell is internalized by the cell. This is plasma membrane, it invaginates and then endocytic vesicle is formed that is released in the cytoplasm. This endocytic vesicle is known as phagosome. Diameter of this phagosome or endocytic vesicle is 250 nanometer. Phagocytosis takes place in the mammalian cells like macrophages, monocytes and neutrophils. Second is pinocytosis. It is also known as cellular drinking. In this extracellular fluid and small solute particles are internalized by the cell and then membrane bound vesicle is formed that is released in the cytoplasm. Here the size of the vesicle is less than 150 nanometer in diameter. Receptor mediated endocytosis in this on the cell surface receptors are present. This is plasma membrane, cytoplasm, this is receptor and then this receptor binds with the macromolecule that is present in the outside environment. This receptor which it is which it recognize this is known as macromolecular ligand and this is the receptor. Then it is internalized by the cell in the form of the receptor ligand complex. and released inside as the membrane bound vesicle containing the receptor ligand complex. This is plasma membrane and this is inside. Receptor mediated endocytosis. Receptor mediated endocytosis is of two types. Clathrin dependent and clathrin independent. Clathrin dependent. In the clathrin dependent endocytosis, macromolecules comes and bind to the receptor and this receptor ligand complex 
accumulates in the clathrin coated pit and then these are internalized by the cell in the clathrin coated vesicle. Clathrins are, clathrin assemble in the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane. Clathrin consists of three copies of the clathrin heavy chain and three copies of the clathrin light chain. These are arranged in the form of the clathrin triskelion from the central vertex. Three heavy chain radiates and these have the terminal globular domain and to the inner half of the clathrin heavy chain, light chain is bound. Example of clathrin dependent endocytosis is uptake of LDL that is low density lipoprotein. This LDL comes and binds with the LDL receptors that are accumulated in the clathrin coated pit. Then starts the formation of the clathrin coated vesicle at the neck of this bud. The cytosolic protein dynamin polymerizes, GTP is hydrolyzed using this energy that is released from the hydrolysis of GTP. Clathrin coated vesicle is formed. This clathrin coated vesicle is in the cytoplasm. Then the clathrin coat is shed. Then this uncoated vesicle is present which consists of the LDL receptor and ND LDL. Then this uncoated vesicle fuses with endosome. And then it is known as early endosome. Here the pH is low and this low pH causes the release of LDL from its receptor. Then this early endosome matures into late endosome. Then this late endosome fuses with lysosome and lysosome consists of hydrolyzing enzyme and this LDL is then hydrolyzed. Clathrin independent endocytosis clathrin independent endocytosis is caviole mediated endocytosis and one is Macropinosome. Exocytosis. Exo means outside and cytosis means cells. That is, when the product is released outside the cell, it is known as exocytosis. Transport vesicles that are destined to the plasma membrane fuses with the plasma membrane and then releases the content outside the cell. This is vesicle. This then goes and fuses with the plasma membrane and its content is released with the extracellular fluid. Exocytosis may be constitutive secretory pathway that is carried by all cells or it may be regulated secretory pathway this is carried by specialized cells and these specialized cells secretes the products on demand example release of hormones, digestive enzymes, and neurotransmitters. So, in the 
the receptor mediated endocytosis we have seen that receptor ligand complex is internalized by the cell and then the endocytic vesicle containing this receptor ligand complex fuses with the endosome. In the endosome the pH is low and when this receptor ligand complex encounters this low pH then the receptor and ligand dissociates. This happens because outer domain of receptor undergoes conformational change in the presence of low pH or structure of ligand changes. or both may happen and then receptor ligand complex dissociates that means now the ligand is no more bound to receptor. So now the receptor and ligand is dissociated. Now what happens to this dissociated receptor and ligand? There are various fates let us see them one by one. One of the fate is receptor is recycled and ligand is degraded. Example is LDL and its receptor. When LDL binds to its receptor, this LDL receptor complex is internalized by the cell. Then the endocytic vesicle carrying the LDL receptor com complex fuses with endosome here the pH is low. In the presence of this low pH, LDL dissociates from its receptor. Then LDL is moved to lysosome, where it is hydrolyzed. In the presence of hydrolyzing enzyme, this LDL and the receptor is recycled on the surface of plasma membrane so that it is used again. Second fate is both receptor and ligand is recycled. Example is transferrin and its receptor. This transferrin binds with iron and then it goes and binds to the receptor this transferrin receptor complex is internalized by the cell and inside the cell vesicle containing transferrin receptor complex fuses with endosome where it encounters low pH. Now from the transferrin iron is released. Now this transferrin is known as epotransferrin. And this epotransferrin is bound to the receptor. Iron is released. This epotransferrin receptor complex is then recycled to the surface of plasma membrane. In the plasma membrane, the pH is neutral. In this neutral pH, epotransferrin is released. And the receptor is present on the surface of the plasma membrane. This epotransferrin can now bind with another iron. Third is both receptor and ligand 
is degraded. Example is epidermal growth factor and its receptor complex. This is internalized by the cell and vesicle containing epidermal growth factor and its receptor fuses with endosome. Here the pH is low. So epidermal growth factor dissociates from its receptor. This dissociated epidermal growth factor and receptor both then moves to lysosome and in the presence of the hydrolyzing enzyme of lysosome both epidermal growth factor and receptor are degraded. Transcytosis It is transcellular movement of any molecule or ligand. Transcellular means between the two cells or across two cells. It combines both endocytosis and exocytosis. That means both endocytosis and exocytosis are involved. This is the cell, this is nucleus. Certain ligand is present in the extracellular fluid which has to be internalized. Membranal invagination takes place, it is internalized by the cell, then it moves across the cytoplasm of the cell in the endocytic vesicle and it is released by the exocytosis from the opposite side of the plasma membrane. Example is transcytosis of mother immunoglobulin that is antibody and it moves across the intestinal epithelial cells of newborn. So this is all for transport of macromolecules across plasma membrane. In the next video, we will discuss about membrane potential, both the resting potential and action potential. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.